Pi, popularly known as beans, is one of the staple foods on the African continent. It is a leguminous crop that contains 25% protein and several other vitamins and minerals. Beans can be processed and consumed in different forms, such as beans pottage, akara, and moi moi. It can also be cooked along with other foods, such as rice, yam, and vegetables. Cowpea or beans is produced in millions of tons globally. In 2018 alone, Africa produced nearly 7.1 million tons out of the 7.6 million tons of dried beans produced globally. Nigeria is the largest producer and consumer of beans, accounting for 48% of Africa's production and 46% of global production. Despite the huge prospect of cowpea, the crop suffers serious damage by pests during every stage of its life cycle. One of these pests is the pod borer, or Maruka vitrata. The damage caused by the pod borer to the cowpea or beans plant reduces the size and quality of harvest by up to 80%. To tackle this challenge, farmers have to spray pesticides up to eight times within the farming season. This is usually not effective because the chemicals do not reach the pest larva inside the plant tissues. The chemicals are also very expensive, more so due to inadequate training to farmers on chemical use such heavy chemical use often leads to unintended human health and safety hazards. Apart from the loss recorded at harvest, the chemical residual in the grains reduces its market standard so that it becomes impossible for farmers to export their cowpea produce for foreign earning. The only solution to these problems is to develop a cowpea or beans variety that is resistant to the pot borer pest. It is in this light that the African Agricultural Technology Foundation, in collaboration with the Institute for Agricultural Research, Samaru, and other partners developed a cowpea that is resistant to the pot borer or Maruka vitrata. After about 10 years of research and extension activities, this cowpea was approved for commercial release in Nigeria by the Nigerian Biosafety Management Agency on the 29th of January 2019. Ever since the release of the pot borer resistant cowpea or PBR cowpea, many farmers and other actors in the agricultural value chain have been asking questions on the nature, quality, and good agricultural practices regarding this new cowpea produce. This documentary sheds light on these and many more issues. What is the PBR cowpea all about? Professor Mohamed Faguji Ishiaku is the principal investigator of the pod borer resistant cowpea development project. The pod borer is a type of a butterfly whose larva feeds on cowpea leaves, uh, flower buds, flower, and also if the flower escapes damage and the pod develops, the pod is being destroyed by this insect. Uh, it scientists no, call it Maruka vitrata. And uh, from estimations in the field, this insect under full infestation in a typical cowpea field for a variety that is susceptible. Uh, and unfortunately, all cowpea varieties are susceptible to this insect until this intervention that we are making. This insect is known to cause up to 80% yield loss in farmer's field. And one of the ways of controlling the insect has been so far to heavily spray cowpea fields by farmers. And um, cow the sprays are made of insecticides which are not only expensive and usually very unaffordable to our resource poor farmers, but it is also dangerous to human health and can also pollute our environment and have serious fatal consequences on other uh, things in the environment like beneficial insects, um, other animals, and so on and so forth, fishes. So, so in a nutshell, it's a destructive insect. Anything that can cause up to 80% yield loss 
uh, it is a very serious insect. What this uh, new variety of cowpea is bringing on board is that it is resistant to the pot burner that is a major problem on the production of, of cowpea. This um, variety has been tested and proven to be able to reduce the effect of I mean of um, uh, spraying uh, pesticides about this um, pot bearer to the tune of nine, uh, 75 percent, 75 percent reduction in the spray of pesticides. That is what is bringing on board, and the the implication of that is that we're going to have a better yield and better profit. In fact, it has been confirmed that it can increase profit, uh, profitability by 30% in the farmer's um, uh, uh, income for just using this variety. Like every other agricultural technologies, the pot borer resistant cowpea or beans is developed to solve certain field problems faced by the cowpea farmers. Let's find out the nature of the problems from the farmers. <laughs> The African Agricultural Technology Foundation is the brain behind the pot borer resistant cowpea. The foundation is working tirelessly to help cowpea and other crop farmers solve persistent field problems. Uh, AATF works uh, when, as its name said, AATF look at any good technologies. It doesn't give itself a single mandate set. I am in this particular area. We look at ATF look at every good technology that may exist or that can be created to solve key concerns agricultural is facing key agricultural concerns in sub-Saharan Africa. Like the port border resistant cowpea, we address the question of Maruka because Maruka is one of the most damaging insects on cowpea and for which a solution exists. So you see, we are not, we are not, uh, we look at, as I said, AATF look at any important technology can be adapted to our environment to solve our problems, agricultural problems. Our major role is to look for technologies that are relevant for farmers in Africa. Bring these technologies in Africa, develop them, and adapt them to African conditions and deploy them to smallholder farmers within Africa. So realizing that Maruka vitrata or pot borer is a major problem in cowpea production in Africa. The, an organization called Network for Genetic Improvement in Cowpea you know, sought for solution to this uh, problem. Before then, scientific, uh, scientists all over the world have tried to develop solutions, but none was working. So this Network for Genetic Improvement of Cowpea in Africa, in JICA, came up with a solution that you know, incorporates a gene into the cowpea 
a gene that will enable it to resist this particular insect attack. So when we saw this possibility, AATF tried to negotiate and get access to that particular trait. And then when we got the access, we now started building networks and partnerships with inst relevant institutions to be able to develop this technology so that it can be useful for farmers. Now, AATF engaged the Council for Scientific Council for Industrial Research in Australia to you know, do the transformation of the cowpea, putting in this gene in the cowpea. Of course, Nigeria is the largest producer of cowpea, also the largest importer of cowpea. So we think Nigeria is one of the countries that we need to test it. And so that is how we came to Amadou Bello University, the Institute for Agricultural Research, working with their scientists. Rather than replace traditional cowpea varieties in Nigeria, the pot borer resistant cowpea is an improvement on our traditional varieties. It retains all the other qualities of a traditional variety, plus an ability to resist the pot borer pest. You also need to know that the PBR cowpea or beans is not different to our traditional varieties in terms of nutrient and farm management practices. The difference between the pot borer resistant variety and other varieties is that all other varieties are susceptible to this insect, which means this insect can, in the absence of insecticide sprays, cannot survive this insect, and the insect can cause that damage that I referred to, up to 80% damage. However, uh, these susceptible varieties can be protected with insecticide. So farmers buy very toxic insecticides and spray their cowpea fields often up to eight times in order to get rid of this insect. However, the pod borer resistant variety can protect itself without the use of insecticides. So in other words, even if there is an infestation of, of pod boring insect in your field, once you planted the pod, boring, the pod borer resistant variety, it can protect itself against pod borer. So that is essentially the difference. But otherwise, in terms of taste, in terms of uh, all other things which a cowpea grower or, or consumer is looking for, there is no difference. There is no agronomic practice that is different that is required in producing this cowpea, except that uh, there is a specified period of application of insecticide. According to our work, we recognize the fact that in addition to Maruka, there are other insect pests of cowpea. Uh, even though they may not be as destructive as this insect, but they need to be protected. And so therefore, therefore at just about flowering, just about flowering, which is about uh, 45 days on the average after planting of cowpea, uh, there should be one spray of an insecticide with a dual dual uh, action insecticide, the one that contains a contact and systemic insect insecticide in it. And uh, secondly, at podding stage, then the last and the second spray should be given with the same insecticide. So two sprays. That is what we are emphasizing to farmers to take note of at flowering, which is around 45 days after planting, and then at the middle of podding, when the pods have started showing around. So that will be it. So that's the difference. Now coming back to the nutrient in the cowpea itself, one of the conditions for registering it as a variety is to show the similarity in terms of proximate content of this new variety with the conventional varieties. So therefore, uh, in terms of protein content is the same with our conventional varieties. Uh, in terms of some other mineral contents, it is the same. But essentially the difference 
is that it is resistant to pot boring insect, which no other variety is resistant to. The benefits of the pot borer resistant cowpea or beans to the Nigerian farmer and the country's economy is enormous. The benefit is huge for farmers. You know, without any intervention at all, farmers often lose up to 80 90 percent of their yield to these insects. You know, cowpea is a very important um, source of dietary protein for us. There are some uh, few Nigerians who can afford animal source proteins like meat, milk, egg, fish, and so on. But it's not everybody in Nigeria that can afford that. So for those who are not able to afford, or even those who can afford little of these animal source proteins, a cowpea is a, is a major source of dietary protein that we have in Nigeria. So this uh, product is actually making cowpea available to farmers and for planting and to consumers for eating. You know, so you can imagine a situation whereby without any intervention, a farmer will lose 90% after toiling a whole season and nothing to show. And then the little that they can harvest and bring home, uh, bring home is full of um, you know, uh, damages that the farmer will not even be able to sell it you know, and gain a good price in the market. So it's a waste of time. And prior to this time, farmers you know, spray several times, several chemicals to control it. Still, it doesn't give perfect control. So farmers now will save the cost of so much chemicals. So you see from this saving, you know, they are, their income is also improving. You know, a kind of a substitution, you know, is also improving. And then the fact that they, they will not lose that 90% and they will gain it. So it's a lot of, uh, you know, gain for the farmer and then gain for the consumer who sees it now available to consume. You know, when we are talking about uh, food security, we are actually looking at ability to have food, that's food availability. We are also looking at ability to access food. You know, it's not, a, a farmer does not produce everything that they need, but can imagine a cowpea farmer who now is able to produce more and sell more then when he sells more, he can use the money to access other food items or other things that he needs. For the country, it is a huge gain because Nigeria is actually, though we produce cowpea, but we import cowpea as well. Now, by so much production, we'll be able to satisfy local market as well as also export. And this is a huge you know, uh, prospect for, for, for the country? Well, um, first of all, Nigerian farmers will gain from savings of having to spray their cow peas. And uh, I'm not an economist, but with a simple arithmetic of savings from, from spraying of insecticide alone, we, the gain when one million hectares is planted to this variety, the savings will be 16 billion naira annually. If a, a liter of insecticide is being sold at 1,200 naira or so. So the savings is going to be huge. That means from spraying eight times, this spraying requirement will be reduced to about two sprays. So the savings of not spraying, Nigeria will save this much, at least 16 billion naira every year, if one million hectares of this variety is planted. Secondly, there is a yield advantage to which if uh, we are estimating 20% yield increase, this will translate to about 46 billion naira annually as a result of planting up to one million hectares. So these are the benefits our farmers will, and then 
The other benefits that will come along with it will be uh, our environment will be healthier, uh, devoid of these harmful insecticides, uh, and some other, other benefits which only the uh, economists will, will study properly and quantify. When it comes to the issue of genetically modified crops, especially in Africa, there is usually fear of health and environmental safety. The potborer resistant cowpea is very safe as it has gone through all the screening and accreditation processes. The fear of the farmers of Ajemu is because of um, the number of uh, things that are known and are not known. So this product has, been, has gone through laboratory and scientific procedures for the past one decade, more than one decade. And in this country, federal government has agencies that are supposed to look at every new product with respect to agriculture, with respect to food, the safety measures. There are so many agencies that are involved. And this has gone through all of those agencies to make sure that this is standardized, it is safe, it is healthy, not just to human beings, also to animals and to the environment. And these agencies of government have approved, gone through all of the scientific reports and have approved this. And that led to the federal government, through the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, to have approved these products to go into the field. After decades of experiments, decades of uh, testing, decades of uh, demonstrations, and the exposure is now out. And I can say and I can tell farmers that this is a good product. The scientific, the scientific world has approved it. The policymakers have approved it. The uh, standardization of agencies for safety, food safety, have approved it. And we should believe them because they are our own people. They are not from outside of the country. Uh, the technique is a new scientific approach and um, requires uh, a lot of um, regulatory conditions which the Nigerian government has uh, put the responsibility on the N Nigeria uh, Biosafety Management Agency in Abuja. Uh, they were the ones who regulated this research. The Institute for Agricultural Research, IAR, under uh, my coordination of the scientific team, uh, wrote for the request for us to be accredited by that agency to give us the go-ahead to delve into the research of, of developing um, the pot borer resistant um, variety. We initiated a breeding program and then we came up with this. The whole work started right from 2009 uh, until 2019 when we successfully released this variety. Uh, there are different stages uh, of what will be done First of all, we started from the laboratory. From the laboratory, we went to the field. From the field, we went to farmer's field to test the efficacy of the resistance in these new cowpea varieties. And then we provided this whole data of our research, which was verified by national agencies responsible before we were granted the permission to register it as a variety and released it in December 2019. This new cowpea or beans variety will no doubt give hope to the Nigerian beans farmer with increased yields and reduced chemical use. What will be the reaction of the farmers when they finally have the variety in their hands? <laughs> Indeed, the farmers cannot wait to have this novel variety with them for cultivation. How long more will they have to wait? The professionals have the answers. By July, by July next year, 20, 2021, it should be ready in uh, um, uh, input sellers' shops for farmers to go and buy. 
Now that the beans farmers have knowledge of when the commercial seeds will be available, another burning question is where to get the genuine seeds. So where the farmer should go for this seed, the recommended source is the IAR, that is the Institute of Agricultural um, Research that is based in the Mount Berlin University area here. There's a seed unit that is in charge of this product. And by next year, this will be available to all the farmers. As the Nigerian cowpea farmers await the availability of the pot borer resistant cowpea, there is no doubt that abundant fortune awaits them. What more can our farmers expect? The PBR cowpea provides better seed choices for farmers. It helps produce more reliable harvest and better grain quality. Moreover, the variety increases profit in cowpea farming as it reduces grain yield loss by at least 30% and reduces pesticide use from an average of eight applications to two applications during growing season. Overall, higher and better quality production will improve the livelihoods of farmers and contribute to increased trade in the country. Nigerian farmers and consumers should, therefore, embrace the pot boiler resistant cowpea for improved productivity, food security, and economic growth. <laughs>